top division, the Premier League. An absolutely fantastic racing. Oh no! Hello, welcome back to another episode of the TFR Esports Podcast. Here we are for round four of the season, the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm joined by two guests today. Um, Epic the Animal, who is the Season 9 World Champion, and NCL Cam, my usual uh, co-guest or, or kind of co-presenter, whatever you want to want to go with. But um, here we are joining at the end of qualifying here. And since you're the, the new guest, Logan, I'll, I'll go to you first. Talk to me a bit about Monaco. How do you find it on the F1 game in general? Where do you stand with it? Is it the hardest track on the calendar? Obviously, we've got rain in this Monaco race as well. What, what What's your kind of uh, stance on it? Honestly, I kind of hate it in F1 games, talking from a league racing perspective, because, you know, it's pretty much impossible to overtake, especially considering that compared to real life in the games, both Slipstream and DRS are way weaker. I think in a video, someone said, like, it's literally, like, to make it realistic, you would have to more than double it. So it's very impossible to overtake on this track. And also, as someone that plays with the controller, this is a very terrible track for pad players. So it's kind of just a double whammy uh going into this race but you know we just do it the best we can no matter what the track is yeah absolutely and uh just seeing there on screen lucas percy been it as you went on pole um how was your qualifying logan was it kind of all about just getting one clean lap in or, or was it just about picking the right point with the conditions and things like that where, where were you with that uh, it was the same exact thing as last week's race where uh, <clears throat> the track was getting better all the way up until pretty much the end of the session. By the time the track was optimal, light rain conditions for the intermediates, there was enough time in the session that, yeah, you could definitely get out in plenty of time, but you only really had time for one run. So kind of like last week's race, it came down where the track was at its quickest for everyone's last run which is why I just stayed in the pits early on, because while you can put in a banker time, I feel like you risk more potentially, you know, if a car spins out in the way or anything like that, or you even damage the car yourself. If the track's going to be considerably quicker at the end, I just wait to go out at the end. I was fresh off of practicing in light rain conditions for uh, the qualifying session. And yeah, just went out there, uh, nailed my lap, kept it clean and didn't put it in the wall, which is the uh, important part. That's for sure. And what about yourself, Cam? I saw you were fourth there, seven tenths off. It's a pretty good position, though, uh, for Monaco. You can you you want to be at that part of the field compared to the any further back. You won't want to be any further back, or else you'd be in that kind of danger uh, kind of point of of the pack at the at the start. But what what was your kind of feelings after that qualifying going into the race? It was you know it was a lot better than I expected. Um, I did. At, for the first time in a long time, I actually put practice in for the race. Uh, but I was more kind of full wet conditions and time trial sort of thing. But I'm going to be honest, if I hadn't put any practice in, I would have probably finished last. Um, it was it took so long for me to, you know, get used to not only Monaco, because typically I'm not very good at Monaco, but just to, to get used to the wet weather in Monaco is a really tricky kind of adjustment. But once you hit a groove, you kind of you start to understand what gears are best coming out of certain corners, um, kind of where you can slightly take liberties with track limits. Because, I mean, even on the chicane and turn one, there's a lot of the curbs that you can use. So it was more of a case of understand that, try and take it into the qualifying session, then obviously just try and get as high up as you can for a good position in the race. And, you know, P4, I was more than happy with only, I mean... I know I was seven temps off, but seven temps off compared to what I expected to be is, is far less. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Um, it, I think Epic and Percy were a bit of a league of their own in qualifying, so it was kind of, for everybody else, it was maybe just staying within that kind of uh, pack, if you like. Um, because if I, I mentioned myself, down in 12th, it's, you, I'm in that danger point where it's like, you're going to get attacked from behind, you're going to get kind of cars kind of battling each other in front of you. And like I say, where you were, it was a good position because there wasn't too many cars in front, uh, but you could do something with it. Um, we're on the formation lap at the minute, guys. Um, I'll go back to you, Logan. Talk to me about 
your season and kind of the thoughts ahead because looking at the qualifying there for Ferrari, your first and fifth with D. What's D like as a teammate? You've obviously got a bit of history there. What, what what's that like for for this season? Oh, I like D. He's a nice guy. You know, we got along good even when we were battling for the championship together. But uh, I haven't really spoken to him at all as a teammate, to be honest. You know, I've just what you see of me in the group chat is about, you know, all I've really done. You know, he hasn't reached out to me. I didn't really think I had to reach out to him. I mean, I mean, what is there to say? Like, hey, we're in the same car in the game. You know, (laughs) I'm coming in here a couple races late. So it's not like I'm in a championship position unless if something drastic happened. But yeah, just uh, taking everything one lap at, not one lap, but yeah, one race at a time. And uh, like I said, this one was definitely going to be a challenge going in. I mean, qualifying was a challenge just because since I knew the track was good at the end, it was just sitting there for so long. So after sitting and doing one lap, you know, I got to be right on it right away because I got Percy right at my butt. Absolutely. Well, we've got the race start just about to happen here. We've got the final cars lining up and uh snoops took uh quite a bit out of position there down in 17th for mercedes i think we're going to see quite a good start from him though but um as we wait for the lights and um a little bit of lag on the stream i, I know vectro did mention this uh we will then see how this unfolds and there we go we are underway percy gets a very good launch there going straight on the attack at you uh logan and um yeah this is the stream freezing up a little bit i was warned about this but um percy does get ahead of you there logan so so what happened there i don't know what the hell happened with me you know i'm known for always getting fantastic starts and i just had like brain lag or something my reaction was terrible i spun a little bit in second gear trying to make up for it you know it was just a really stupid moment just a terrible start and i was really mad at myself you know i'm known for if i'm in the front row always leading in the turn one regardless and now the opposite's happening you know i start on pole it's in the wet which i love and i've been the start it's like i wasn't expecting to do that but you know 39 laps ahead of us yet absolutely and uh what about your start cam you you've dropped one place the d but um you're still in the mix at this point so so can you remember what you were kind of thinking at this at this stage or is it just kind of trying to stay in it well i got a really good launch um but you know with with lucas and you know logan going side by side into turn one toyne sort of you know boxed me in but d also got a really really good start so i was kind of if I hadn't have backed out from D, we were going up that really windy straight side by side, and I kind of just could not be bothered. So um, I just thought, you know what, it's lap one, there's 39 left, everyone's going to have incidents, let's not have one lap one. Um, I know D's pretty quick, so I was kind of like, all right, D's not going to exactly hold me up. So uh, I just I sort of conceded that place, knowing that, you know, I've got the rest of the rest to try and make up for it, and I wasn't too too interested in going side by side up the the first row. Well, that's the thing, you can't really win Monaco on the first lap or even the first corner. So it is a thing of kind of just staying in the fight, if you like, to then see what happens. But uh we see D's already got a time penalty. Um there's quite a few people that picked up corner cut and penalties uh during this race as we'll see on that left hand side. But um I can see Tex had a pretty good start. He's up in seventh, had a good qualifying he's starting to perform quite well for Alfa Romeo, and um, yeah, it's a bit of a steady start. I think, Logan, everybody got the memo to take Monaco a little bit easy at the start for, for once, and um, you know, no DNFs, no crashes so far, and um, it's it's quite good, isn't it, when, when the grid actually listens and takes it easy for once at Monaco? Yeah, it's like, like you said, it's honestly really surprising, <laughs> and yeah. uh, yeah, we're all just kind of spreading out more and more. You know, they've got a couple of seconds between each of us up front. At this point, I actually did knock my front wing. So I was on a yellow front right part of the wing for pretty much the whole race because I don't, I didn't fix it in the pits. So yeah, I had a terrible start, terrible first lap. But, you know, I think I'm in the same boat everyone else is where we actually realized, hey, it's a long race. Let's just uh, chill out for a couple of seconds, especially in this league. Monaco always gets wild. So you just got to make sure you stay in it. 
yeah, you're not wrong there. That's <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we can see the position swaps there a little bit. We can see towards the back, Snook, so he's gained four positions at this start, but uh, not too much, as to be expected at Monaco. But at this point of the race, Cam, is this all about getting into a, a bit of a rhythm? I see you've actually managed to get D, though, there. So can you remember what happened there, D dropping that position? Yeah, um, it's kind of like a with me and D, <laughs> we're almost kind of, not official teammates whenever we're in the same league. Um, kind of, we have that level of respect. And D, you know, I think at this point he mentioned that he had he had damage, so um, he kind of just didn't want to, you know, back me up and kind of just let me let me pass and sort of release me to try and chase after time. Um, so yeah, with D, it's kind of, you know, we have that level of respect where we can just acknowledge then one's faster and. We don't want to ruin each other's races. Absolutely. Well, um, it wasn't long until we had our first instant. I, I said it was a pretty clean start, but then we had about three there in a matter of a couple of corners. Uh, so we've got Big Boy Joanne, Sam Green, Tochi, and Lucchino all in the pits there. And, yeah, I don't know really what to make of that. I think I saw Sam Green clatter into the, the barrier after the chicane, after the tunnel. And then Lucchino and Big Boy Joanne seem to just merge together and uh, crash uh, into the barrier after to back there. But uh, this is then set myself free, actually, down in eighth. And I felt like, I mean, it's I'll kind of go back to you, Cam, because you might be able to relate a bit more. It felt like as soon as you got a car out of the way in front, you were almost set free a little bit with Monaco. It's kind of like... If you get stuck behind somebody, you aren't, you know, unless they make a mistake, you're going to really struggle unless they're very slow to get past. So when that car is finally gone, it is just like a bit of relief, really, just to be able to do your own thing and, and push on. I actually kind of had the opposite, a um, little bit of an inside info. By now, I've actually damaged my wing. Um, so I'm I'm currently running on kind of yellow, orange wing. Um, because as soon as D released me, okay, although I've got the clean air, I, I like I wasn't pulling away, like I wasn't necessarily pulling away from D, and I kind of you you you're more focused on the car behind you than actually keeping it out of the wall. Weirdly, um, so I kind of had a lack of sort of concentration, turning a bit too early, and you know it's it's one of those where you can sit there and you can be like. Uh, it's, it's Monaco, but it's it's more just a lack of concentration from my side. So sure. uh, I think I think at this point, although D's let me pass because of his damage, I think I actually ironically have a bit more damage than him. So it's uh, yeah, no. it's not the best scenario at all. Absolutely. Well, both of you at this point of the race have got damage, so I'm I'm the only one here uh, that has got a car intact. But I've now got stuck behind Tech here, and this is going to be like this for another. 25 laps probably uh, where there's a car in front that he's actually got floor damage and he's not got the pace but in these particular conditions it's different in the dry at least you can get a better exit and things like that but in these intermediate conditions I think we talked about this a little bit at Silverstone last week Cam, you, it's just that little bit more difficult just to get the clean run on that car in front and on a track like Mon Monaco where there isn't anywhere to properly overtake it's even harder. And uh, so we're on lap six now of 39. And um, so looks Percy starting to build a little bit of a gap. We are going to skip ahead a little bit here uh, to about 24 minutes exactly ahead. And uh, just to kind of move ahead, because we've got a bit of a battle here towards the back. Quite a few people out of place, and this is your teammate actually, Cam Kaya. Um, what was your verdict on his race? He's just kind of collided there with Tochi, it seems. But um, I, I believe he finished the race, didn't he? Or no. or no, he finish, about no. lap fourteen, I want to say. Ah, uh, interesting. So, well, I so mean, what was, look, I yeah. messaged. I kind of just messaged him after the race. I went to him, but you know, don't worry about it. Kind of, we both understand that you know, Kaya's he's not going to be sat there, you know, overtaking people, fighting for points week in, week out. Obviously, the goal is to finish the races, you've got to be in it to win it, sort of thing. But 
you know, with Kaya, he's, he's, he's learning. There's definitely been an improvement this season. Although, you know, he had the DNF last race in um, Silverstone. But if you look back to Brazil and Australia, there's a very, very big difference between, you know, his racecraft from when, you know, we, we joined his teammates and before. So he's, he's definitely learning and taking things on. He just needs to, you know, he needs to develop that level of focus to the point where if he notices that he's struggling or he's going to, his car's in a position where he can't necessarily keep it out of the barrier, he needs to now develop that kind of awareness to take a kind of 10% back out of what he's giving and just get to the end. Or, I mean, I even said to him, it doesn't matter whether you finish last by a minute or 12th and you've locked it. As long as you finish the race, it's okay. But, you know, it's it's kind of Monaco, so I can't I can't be mad at him for not, for not finishing. For sure. Um, at this point, Logan, we're on lap, uh, just about going to lap nine now. And the gap to Percy has increased a little bit. We've gone up to about 4.5 seconds here so what's going through your mind at this point you've got a big gap to the car behind you've not got to worry about anybody hunting you down but is it about trying to keep that gap within range of if Percy makes a mistake you're there to capitalize or is it just focusing completely on your own race and just doing it lap by lap well I mean you always just need to be focusing on your own race and just doing the best you can. You know, you can't magically be like, oh, someone's quicker. I gotta magically go half a second fast now. You know, it doesn't work like that. So physically, you know, in terms of what you're doing with your hands, you focus on just doing the best you can and not really thinking about it, just letting it be intuitive what you've practiced and what you know. But you are aware of the situation and you kind of use that information to make the best decisions possible. So like at this point of the race, you know, I got that yellow front wing. It's Monaco and I'm a pad player. So I'm going to be a disadvantage to any wheel player that's decent at the game. Like Lucas is, he's very good. So when I see that gap pulling away, of course I would like for it to shrink, but that's not the case. You know, I got this damage. It's not a great track for, for me, you know, and I'm just thinking the good thing here is that the front of the grid is pulling away. So when it does get to the time to make pit stops, even wow, it's kind of gets loose there. And uh, <clears throat> even if <laughs> uh, when it gets to the time to the pit stops, you know, I'm going to have enough of a gap that I'm not going to have to worry about people staying out a lap longer and maybe really get into the way. So yeah, I'm happy that the gap between us and the rest of the field's going, but you know, there's also things I didn't know. Maybe he's quick because he stayed on a wet setup, you know? So I was just telling myself, you don't know what the situation is. So what you do know is you're just running on inters until it's dry. Let's just open up the gap to the rest of the field and kind of figure things out from there. But yeah, just like I said, being intuitive is what I practice with my hands, but my brain's just taking in all the information possible so I can make the smartest decision come time to pit onto these dry tires. Absolutely. And I think that is quite a lot of it at the minute is it's just trying to get to that dry kind of stint. Um, it's surviving uh, the, inter well, this is my thought process at the start, was surviving these intermediates and maybe just kind of sitting tight for the moment and then really going for it when the dry tyres would kick on. Um, we had a bit of an incident there, actually. I think Kaya and Lenardis merged together coming up the hill, uh, them guys not having a, a race to remember. Somebody who's having a bit of a poor race, uh, which I'll mention, actually, we lost Delta in amongst all that. Uh, his, his start of the season kind of going from bad to worse. He's going to be quite a way behind now, uh, his teammate Tech. But somebody who's also having a bit of a poor showing is big boy Joanne. What do you make of uh, his race so far, Cam? Uh, can you fill me in a bit? on why you think he's potentially down there or or or, or what what do you think is going on? Well he, he was that McLaren that spun, if you remember. Um I think he was involved in that collision with uh Sam Green, Tochi and I wanna say Vessia. Um mm. but yeah, he was the kind of the McLaren that got, you know, the most affected by it. He was well, he was backwards coming out of the back, so it's Although at the moment it's a difficult race, you've kind of, I wouldn't say it's necessarily down to pace, more just that one incident that's, that's cost him a lot of time. 
Absolutely. Well, we'll we'll zip ahead a little bit again because it's all bit single file traffic at the moment. So we're probably going to go. Uh, it's quite hard to to guess it a little bit. We're going to go to thirty five minutes twenty seconds. Um, and at this stage, we're now onto lap fifteen. The conditions are now starting to dry up a bit. We've got quite a few trains on the track. A lot of cars stuck behind each other. You and spin in there once again. And um, at this point, it's just getting closer and closer to that kind of uh, crossover point of the dry tyres. And Cam, what what were your thoughts at this stage? Is it kind of... You're you're kind of stuck behind D a little bit. You've got a couple of cars behind you, but is it just trying to get to that point where you change the tires, or or were you trying to push on and find a way past D? Um, we might need a bit of a pause here because you've lagged heavily, and I'm I think we're completely oh out dear, of track that's with quite it. all right. That's okay. I think uh, we are completely out of sync with the video. I will pause that so i've just paused that at uh 36 four seconds um, right if you want to press play i'll let you know if we are do so okay there you go no nope. yeah, we're good we're good it's a bit beyond but you know that's kind of expected so so, Cam, you've now got ahead of D. Was that D letting you go, or or what was that? Do you do you think he made a mistake, or what, what happened there? No, it's uh, it's another one of those things. So, I mean, earlier in the race we didn't really touch on it, but obviously he let me pass. But then when I got the kind of more significant damage, I then again kind of let him pass. Um, I I believe he got like really quite significant damage at this point so he was very very slow compared to what his optimal was so he kind of coming out the last corner he, he pulled aside and let me pass um which i'm quite grateful of and yeah d was d was struggling quite a lot in terms of damage this race absolutely and uh epic this is the big moment uh You've jumped into the lead there ahead of Percy. He changed his front wing. So your gamble, if you like, of not changing your front wing um, paid off because Percy obviously had damage as well. I, I, like almost everyone having damage at this point of the race. And um, you've now took the lead. We've You've gone on to hard tyres. Everyone's going to come in now and, and fit those tyres on. Um, where were you at with this? Was it kind of a thing of just, right, I'm in the lead now. Let's get out of here and, and win this race? Or... Or, or what were you thinking? Well, I was surprised for a second. Uh, just I didn't realize that he had gotten damaged. I think he got it literally the same lap that we've gone in for the dries. And yeah, like, I'm still figuring things out. You know, am I quicker in the dry? Because maybe he was running more of a wet setup. You know, still a lot to figure out. But for the time being, um, in a good spot, obviously, it's going to be hard for him to get by me because, well, it's Monaco. You know, I got the lead now. I still do have that yellow front right wing. So, yeah, it's a lot of too early to see at this moment. But, yeah, of course, it feels good to be out in the lead and, and control the race. And worst case scenario, if he does get behind by me, there's a huge gap to P2. And since there's the glitch in the game where in online sessions, safety cards and virtual safety cards never happen, you know, unless if I messed up. I'm not going to have any pressure behind me. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it was very safety car and VSC lacking uh, today for whatever reason. I don't know why the game seems to do this sometimes, where it just it always does that. Well, yeah, it's true. It's Monica, but yeah, Monica, yeah. there is no safety since F1 2020. Yes, and so at this point, Percy's starting to put the pressure back on you a little bit here. He's probably not too happy. He's now lost the lead. But again, it is Monaco, and uh, he is not going to find it easy to find a way past you. Well, to be fair, I mean, from your side, you're probably sat there thinking you've got track position. I don't, I don't, you know, if I was leading, I, I wouldn't pit. I, if I had yellow wing damage and I was still keeping the lead, I'd kind of be like, okay, he's pit, he's changed his wing, he's on mediums. But by the time he gets to you, to be fair, 
if he gets to you, his ties are going to be no better than yours, surely. Yeah, but yeah, with the wing damage, though, I think that's the big factor there. So yeah. I, I don't know how much damage he got, but even if it was just a regular yellow wing, I think if I was the guy in second, I'd bit there too. You know, you're definitely going to get second back and you're going to have no pressure behind, you know. So it's like if you would have done nothing, he would have got second anyhow. So we're back underway uh, on, on lap 25 uh, of this 39 lap Monaco Grand Prix. And uh, Logan, I am right behind Tech here and I'm going to have a bit of a good run at him through this tunnel section. Talk me through it. What, what's going on here? <laughs> All right, so seeing this for the first time ever here, let's see what happens. You got to run. I see that light blinking, though. You're basically out of ERS. Down the inside. Oh, you're a little deep there. Not enough room for... Oh, <laughs> the collision. I don't know what happened there. I mean, I think definitely there you went in too deep into the corner, and then it's possible that... You know, it looked like he put you into the wall there afterwards, but at the same time, it is possible that when he went over that curve, because we have damage on standard, it could have scraped his floor and he could have understeered, and that's why you didn't have room then. So mm. we're, we're currently paused as I'm about to go up the inside. Talk me through it. Where's your point of view? I, I, I mean, I've seen your POV. Obviously, this shows your POV, but... <clears throat> I would I would probably say you have gone in a bit hot. Um now normally I'd be like, okay, it's Monaco, you've got to just send it. But you've you've probably sent it a little bit too much there. So I'd say the the my main reason for, for saying that would be the fact that you haven't actually made the corner. Um yeah. although you've attempted to, you've done your best to, you have cut over the chicane. Um, I mean, your footage shows that you, you you definitely do because you get an exceeding track limit warning for it. This would show me that you you have you know you've overshot it. Tech Tech is a little bit unfortunate here. He kind of is between a rock and a hard place. He has to rejoin, but if he rejoins too late, he's going to get slapped with a ten second hard penalty, and you know it's it's all a bit of a mess. I say this this end part is kind of just a a product of the the initial incident. Yeah, interesting but, stuff. You know, the stewards will uh, look at this. Yeah, I mean, my point of view with this, I I mean, obviously I've been behind him for quite a while, and it's Monaco, you have to take any opportunity you can get, if, you know, any opportunity to go up the inside. And my view on this is I've, I've kind of looked, stayed behind him there, moved late to the inside, because I see this, doorway or up the inside if you like is open here he's kind of left that completely open and then i feel in this breaking zone here this is just my point of view i am alongside and my wheel is basically almost alongside his front tire there so then i feel like here i'm entitled to him allowing me a bit of space to then go side by side or, or whatever in the corner because i have got my car alongside if i was say a couple of inches further back or alongside his side pod then i could understand why then 100 percent my fault there but i've made the attempt to get the car alongside and then tried to make the corner which he's obviously not there and then basically cut me off put me in the barrier and um, that's my take on it i can understand where you guys are coming from as well but um, anything to say uh, about that? Or... You, you, right. I would agree with everything. You, it's almost like an open steward room, but you <laughs> have to make the corner. You, you've, that's the, that Which should, I do that's try the thing to do, that's let you fair. down here. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, and I I'm can like, send out someone and away. I can, I can, I can, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't, it doesn't matter though you haven't made the corner. I could sit there and I could go, oh, I did my best to make the corner, but if I haven't made the corner, it doesn't matter if I'm a centimeter off and made the corner. It's as simple as that. With uh, with um, you know, with rules, rules are rules. It's like if if you if you do something out of the rule book, even if even if it's very kind of on the line, if you've crossed the line, you've crossed the line. 
And it's same goes for a track limits. If you cross the line, you haven't made the corner. So your argument of I'm alongside, fair enough, you're alongside, you've gone for the move, but you have not made the corner. That's the problem. And although maybe tech could give you a little bit more room, it still it will always come back to, in my personal opinion, you haven't you ha you just have not made the corner. As close okay, as it is okay. or not, you know. Anything to add, Logan? I mean, no, I think he, he covered it. I mean, you dove in, went in a little hot. We'll have to see his P, well, text P of you on the uh, second part of it, but the first part of it, you know, can't say that that's Tech's fault there. Fair enough, fair enough. I am, um, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and we'll let the, the students decide on that one. But uh, we will we'll resume. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, we will resume uh, from this point, and uh, so yeah, obviously I've got no front wing. I think Tech may have got a little bit of damage there as well from that contact, and uh, yeah, just a thing of kind of bringing it back to the pits and uh, kind of getting the car repaired. We've got D here though, trying to find a way past Tech, uh, who has obviously got a bit of a damaged car here. And D with the DRS, going to have a little look to the inside here on tech, getting a little bit squeezed there, gets the job done, but then ends up in the barrier. Now, Cam, what do yeah, you make of that one? That's uh, yeah, you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna get away with that one. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know if it was reported, but that's uh, you know a stone wall as it comes. Tech's fault. It's unfortunate for D. Re really unfortunate for D because you know it's 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 actually quite a good move, but to the edge tech just does not acknowledge his existence and unfortunately D D comes off sideways and significantly hampered. Yeah, absolutely. What what's your take on it, Logan? I mean, yeah, tech's just not giving him any space on the inside. He's just turned in like he's not there. I mean, I I don't know what the hell he was doing there. Yeah, I and I think that's the thing. It's it's your typical turn one, not really leaving uh, much space. But um, yeah, I think that should probably be a bit of a slam dunk. And um, yeah, Tech at this point, I think he's kind of lost his head a little bit. Um, but he's going to try and make his way back to the pits. Um, I've just came out of the pits. I think behind my teammate, down tenth there. Um, but. Uh, We've not got long to go, and at this point, Logan, with a big gap to Toy Coin behind, are you thinking this race is done at this point, or? Yeah, um, we didn't quite catch it earlier, but uh, uh, Percy had when he, when he was behind me, he uh, on the last chicane, you know, took the curb wrong, it threw him into the wall. I mean, we did briefly mention it before uh, we cut, but uh. Yeah, it, when, as soon as he hit the wall and had the pit, I thought, okay, this race is over. You know, I knew that there wasn't enough time to make up not just a pit stop, but a pit stop with a wing change work worth, even if he was quicker and on medium tires to my hard. So at this point, I was just kind of in mental autopilot, just kind of cruise control, not really pushing, you know, maybe taking a couple tents off my lap time in places here, places there, just to make sure that. I don't bump the wall like I did, like an idiot on lap one, and we just bring this thing home and take this win. You know, since, like I said, since the tracks glitched online since 2020, and there's no safety cars on this track online, I knew that, you know, basically there was nothing stopping me, and ghosting's on too. So a lap car can't even take me out. So, uh, yeah, I was feeling pretty good at this point, and just, uh, yeah, just bringing it home. And yeah, hopefully a glitch doesn't affect me like last. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, just a quick sure. note on those lap cars. Yeah. Ah, they may be ghosting, but God, does the ghosting hurt? Um, Piss you off, doesn't it? Me personally, yeah. I had um, Vessia and Tachi, who they just bit for soft, so they were quicker than me. But weirdly, they weren't quick enough to disappear. And God, it's frustrating because, I mean, I use Lana. I don't know if you do, Logan. I know you do, Cam. But if you've got a ghosted car in front of you, you cannot see that line. Like it's really damn difficult when you've got someone because I think with Tachi he may have been three, four, five laps into the sauce, so his sauce were going off. 
I wasn't quick enough to overtake him, and he wasn't slow enough. Uh, he wasn't quick enough to pull away, and he was just parked in front of me for a solid three laps, and it was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. It's awful. Yeah, I definitely think we'll need to have a little look at the ruling and maybe implement something. I mean, I'm pretty sure I need to reread it, but I'm pretty sure it says even if you are ghosting, as a lap car, you do need to kind of get out of the way unless you are incredibly quicker and, you know, obviously you can breeze clear and get out of the, you know, way of somebody. It is a big distraction, isn't it, Logan? On a On a circuit like this, sometimes, like... If you're in a particular corner, it is quite hard, isn't it? When you've got a ghosting car right in the middle of you and, uh, you know, you might have to focus and kind of catch somebody or something like that. And you've got that kind of thing going on. Yeah, I mean, I'm on T-Cam and after years, it doesn't really, <laughs> after years of playing the game, you just get used to it. You know, I got, I got like multiple kind of cues on track of where to break you know it's not just one board or something it's like a board a part of the track you know there's feel to it as well so I feel like always having multiple cues on where to break really helps for something like that so uh we've got Percy here right on the tail of Toyn coin there's not long to go he's caught him up on these fresh tires and Cam what what are you making of this here Toyn coin having a great race really but he, he seems like he's struggling to hang on. And there we go. We've got Percy that breezes straight past him. Um, a bit of a strange one there, wasn't it? Quite hard to tell what actually happened there. Um, I'm still catching up, mate. <laughs> ah, yeah, I, I honestly, I think that per Twine's just kind of letting past. I I don't see any reason why you'd even bother holding Percy up because, yeah... He's on mediums and his natural pace is probably about half a second a lap, if not more quicker anyway. If there was ever going to be anyone at any point that would be able to just overtake you no matter what, it's probably going to be then. Um, and, you know, for the sake of his race, is he really going to be able to hang on for another nine laps? Probably not. So it's probably, probably the smartest thing to do just to let him pass and get on with your own race. Yeah, I guess it just relieves the pressure in some ways. And a podium, you know, is a pretty solid result. Um, especially yeah. for him who, you know, he hasn't beaten before Joanne so far this season. And speaking of him. Laps left. Yeah. Uh crashing out of the uh of the race there, big boy Joanne. A bit of a a, a sorry day for him, really, uh, after that early incident. And um not a good day kind of for his championship, really, you know, he's going to kind of fall out of that picture. He maybe wasn't in it anyway, but he was kind of just in the mix to potentially do something if something happens in front of him. And um, speaking of championship, what's your thoughts at this point, Cam? You've got Percy a position ahead of you at this point. Are you thinking about it at all? You know, maybe hoping something happens up up the road or? <laughs> nah, I said from day one that I really I've had what two seasons where I've got within a race of winning a title I, and that they both exhausted me I mean Logan's won his title and he had a massive battle with D I'm sure that was you know pretty mentally challenging at times um, but I went through two seasons where it was like so close yet you know I just couldn't do it um, that that kind of destroyed me a bit in regards to my form dropped off massively for a good two seasons um so this season i've got a bit of form my consistency is you know what there with the best it's ever been at the moment the pace isn't quite there considering you know those back-to-back -back seasons that i haven't won a race um i don't look to be like i'm going to win a race as it stands you know there could be changes but it's kind of like if I can finish top three in the standings after, you know, the likes of Epic and Percy and even Toyncoin at times are, are there with their level of pace, and for me that's enough. I'm I'm not really looking to the title at the minute. I mean, if we get to if we get to the finale and I can win it, of course you're going to go for it. But you know, I have no interest in putting the pressure on myself to be like, look, you've got to get this, you've got to get that, just to stay in the fight. 
you know, if it happens, it happens. I'll let it come to me. I'm not I'm not going to go chasing for it. Um, something that I was going to mention, actually, Haas uh, in this race, I'm in a bit of a mixed race. Logan, obviously, you've got quite a bit of history with the Haas team. What's your thoughts about that? Are you looking to potentially find a way back into that uh, team in the future? Or are you quite fine in any other car? Or Because these two, Lacchino and Tristi, had a great season last season. They were third in the Constructors. Um What's your point on that? Are you kind of like sneakily maybe like, oh, find a way to get that seat off them? Or, or are you kind of like, I'm, I'm quite fine at Ferrari? I don't care where I am. You know, right now <laughs> I'm just focused on I'm racing. This, it's this season. I'm in a Ferrari. I got, what, six, five more races to go. That's something I can worry about in the off season. I'm not one of those people that's like, I need this car. I hate that car. It's, you know, you put me in a car, I'll race and I don't care. I mean, preferably, I'd like to be able to fight for constructors. I haven't won a TFR constructors yet. So, uh, oh, true. I do know we'd be able to do it. So, that would be I cool. know a bit about that. Well, <laughs> will it happen here? Will it happen at a different team in a different car in the future? You know, who knows? I mean, but Haas will always be that team that I did win that championship with. But yeah. I got to say, I was a much more livery in 2020 than this bland ass 2022 one. But <laughs> the 2020. Some good potential you know i like it a little bit more so who knows you know I, I like to keep the folks guessing absolutely well a big moment i'll just mention probably the last big moment of this race coin coin there he was running up in third place and he's binned it at the casino section and uh i can feel the pain like he's gonna drop all the way you can see on that leaderboard he's just tumbling down the order as the cars go past him and he's going to drop well out of the points and pretty well, I think he might just get one point as he probably will get classified still, but a bad day at the office cam, isn't it? For McLaren, both cars out, they had a podium right there and he ends up in the wall. It's, it's a pretty bit of pill to take for him, isn't it? Or the, t- the team even. Well, I mean, I guess if there's anything to take from it, he's now not free and oh. I guess it goes to three mm. and one, you know. Yeah, yeah we'll but do. he'll be good. He'll be good. I mean, he was he drove a really good race. I kind of grilled him a little bit for his standards um, prior to this race, but oh, prior or no, before the race, yeah. I don't. I, don't I know, know what prior. Is. <laughs> um, but you know, he definitely, whether or not he acknowledged it, he definitely kind of had a much cleaner race. Uh. I know we had an incident lat one with D, but apart from that, you know, he was pretty much flawless. So it's a shame to see him crash out so late on. But there's a lot to take from it. You know, he can take away that he had, yeah. he definitely had pace. Um, although he was half a minute off Logan. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's a pretty damn good showing from him. Absolutely. And I think it's a very good recovery after that kind of disappointing race at Silverstone, in my opinion, that he had. He was in a, a lot of incidents, and then to kind of really put a show on at Monaco is impressive, that's for sure. And um, for sure, Imola next week, he'll be looking to, you know, pick up those points that he's lost today. And um, But yeah, never, never a good thing to see when somebody's had a great drive and um, ends up in the barrier with only a couple of laps to go. But we'll go to you, Logan, because we are on the final lap here, and... Um, you're just coming up to, to back now and you've won this race before in much more dramatic style back in season nine when he had no front wing for the final lap. Um, but where does this win kind of rank between that and this? It, it was a pretty straightforward result in the end, a good 33 second lead for a moment there you had. Yeah, I mean, this is a great win. This is my first win since coming back. So uh, getting yeah. myself back on the stat sheet after a long time, showing that I wasn't a one-season wonder, you know, I'm here to <laughs> stay. And uh, uh, But, yeah, it, that that race was something special, though. The adversity I had in that race, I got caught up in multiple incidents to still come through and win that one. Like, my other wins in that season were pretty straightforward. I get pulled, get a good start, and I'm just gone like Vettel in, you know, the early 2010s. But that one was, I had to fight for that one. I was thrown bad situations, getting caught up with slower drivers, getting hit, 
and, you know, still being able to pull it out the very end. And that it was like a very exciting race. You know, there was way more of an exciting commentary call for that race than when I won the championship. So, uh, yeah, that's always a bookmarked race win that I have in this league. Yeah, I think I, I've used that clip many, many, many times because it's quite an iconic uh, moment, that's for sure. But um, but yeah, you've picked up the win. Lucas Percy is second. Uh, Cam, you and yourself, um, you and yourself, sorry, you and Percy are the only ones now who have got a 4-0 record over your teammate. So how impressive is yeah. that for Lucas to do that with his teammate being Sam Green, who was runner-up in the championship last season to go 4-0? That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, but Sam Green's been a massive let down, let's be real. I mean, it's all good saying that you know, it's impressive because he was second last season, but I mean, if you you'll be second one season, if you if you're eight for the next season, it doesn't make the the other guys good, it just means you had a really bad season. And you know, the blunt truth is that Sam Green is really, you know I mean, although Red Bull are leading the constructors <laughs> with Epic and D you know, Epic will pick up the, the top points and if they can get going, Sam Green's really going to start letting the team down and he needs to properly get a move on. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting because Red Bull have got that constructor's lead, but it's starting to slip away. And it's not yeah. guaranteed that they're going to keep hold of that. And um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how that constructor's ends up because, yeah, as well, Ferrari, obviously yourself, Logan, and D. You're starting to pick that was good results today. Both cars, you know, high up uh, ish on the order. I think actually, though, D may have had a bit of a yeah, he might have slipped down, yeah, to eighth in the end, but it's still good points. And um, it's going to be an interesting fight for the constructors. Snoop's to get a podium from 17th, probably, you know, one of the, he'll be in the nominees for driver of the day. A great drive from him. And um, Tracy Fork, good result, Cam. You'll be. I'd imagine you'll just take those points for fifth. And um and, key. Exactly. And um the rest of the results are on your screen there. But uh that is a wrap for the Monaco Grand Prix. And um yeah, it's gonna be interesting next week with Imola. Uh I don't believe it's a sprint. I think that's uh the, the race after, which is China. But what's your thoughts ahead of Imola, Cam? Are, are you looking forward to that track? Is it one of your favourite circuits, or where do you stand with that one? No, Imola's up there with the ones that I don't like. Um, <laughs> it's like if you get the rhythm, fair enough, you're good. But I really struggle to get a rhythm at Imola. I'll pro- I mean, yeah. probably every race this season. I'm, I'm just sat there looking to get top five. You know, I don't. I think I've finished top five in the first four races. Don't quote me on it, but I think I've finished something like second, fifth, 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 or something like that. Um, so I am just looking to pick up the pick up the top fives and see where it see where it takes me. Absolutely. And what about yourself, Logan? What what's your thinking ahead of uh, Emma next week? The first time you're going to do that in TFR Esports. Yeah, um, I've had other league races there. Um... I'm confident in my ability at the track. You know, I feel very comfortable with my setup. You know, I can, I know that I can execute my race consistently, but uh, yeah, it's a really terrible track for pad players. So many quick left mm-hmm. rights where patterns managed. And yeah, so uh, if Percy comes out and has a good pace, you know, it's going to be impossible to beat him on a track like that. So, uh, but yeah, just do what I can and maybe something will happen. It'll give me a chance to fight for the win or maybe, I'm underestimating my pace and it'll be good enough. Who knows? Maybe Percy hates the track. So we'll see. Um, it's a track that does hold a good place in my heart. You know, when I first started playing F1 games, it was the F1 game on PS1 of the 95 season. And Imola was one of my favorite tracks on that game. So uh, it is a, still a throwback to this day going back to that track. And I am glad it's back. Yeah, same here. I, I actually really enjoy it. And um, I managed to get my own, I think it was my only podium last season at that circuit and um yeah i'm personally looking forward to it but it's going to be an interesting battle at the front that is for sure but thank you guys for joining me on this podcast uh reviewing the tfre sports season 17 monaco grand prix and we'll be back for imola next week we've only got i think it's imola we've then i know we've got china and bahrain USA. i think, the, I think USA USA, that's it yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So we've got we're halfway through the season. With China being the sprint race. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we've got some tasty races coming up. I bet you're going to be determined, Logan, to finally win your home race. But um, that'll be one to look forward to, that's for sure. But um, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely and um, well we'll be back next week and um, we'll see you then cheers oh, no!